get your books out again. Books. It's up there. I'm so sorry I doubted you. Thank you so much. Stand as we sing. Worthy. Good evening. Good evening. Joe and Miss Carol, thank y'all. I just not, looked over there in between that song and saw that beautiful woman sitting over there with that ugly man. And I thought, wow, who is that? I love it. <laughs> oh, thank y'all for coming. What a joy it is to have y'all with us. So thank you for being here. And I tell you, just thank everyone for being here tonight. I hope you got a Hope you got a nap out. It was too hot to do anything else. But if you like most everybody else, you would watch it in the news to see what next was coming on, right? So that was it. But just as we said this morning, continue to pray for our country, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But just remember, this week, no, nothing really going Tuesday night. Our Experience in God class at 7 o'clock. So be at the uh, uh, down in the fellowship hall, and we'll have our class. And then uh, our youth are doing the Experience in God on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. So Randall has them out there and they're going through their book so it's a, it's they're having a great time of doing that and then remember thursday night brian free in the shirt be here at six uh six o'clock uh i mean seven o'clock our doors are open at six fifteen. uh as i asked this morning for volunteers uh, uh i got none so if anybody would like to volunteer we, we need some help for ushering we need some help with parking security and we also need some help uh, unloading. So if you could be here around five to help with those and then unloading might need to be here a little sooner, but uh, do let me know because if uh, nobody tells me they're gonna be here, I'll come. I'll be here. I see, I knew there'd be a few of you come through on me if I make you feel guilty. So anyway, thank y'all, but just remind me so I can write your names down and uh, be here this, uh, for that. Cause and then just invite people. I'm looking forward to a great night. Uh, I tell you what, they were one of our, probably most people uh, talked about Brian Free last year, and uh, they're going to be here. And 
Uh, I talked to a friend of mine that were with them down in Tennessee on, over the weekend and said they did a great job and had a great time. So just continue to pray for them and as they'll be coming here and then leaving to go down in South Georgia after hours uh, Thursday night. Also, just see all the other things that are before you. Uh, any other announcements or anything before we move on to our prayer time? Well, continue to pray for our country. As I said this morning, we are really just, uh, we're in a mess. And uh, really, we all know the only thing that's going to get us out of this mess is Jesus Christ. And I just pray that we'll continue to pray for our country, pray for our leaders and uh, the families that were affected by the loss of life and then the ones that are shot. And then just pray that our leaders will just come forward and just uh, fall into the, the, the guidance and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will just work on them and just guide them to, to hopefully just get us turned around. Get us turned around and just be praying for them. And then continue to pray for all those that have been mentioned to us, this, uh, mentioned this morning. Uh, just c continue to remember the Lawless family and the loss of Miss Katie Bell. Uh, the Lowe family and the loss of Charlie Lowe. Continue to remember the uh, Ruby Brown family uh, was mentioned this morning along with uh, Joanne Smith family, those remains that have been given to us. And then uh, continue to remember Dwight as he'll be facing some doctor's appointments and things of that nature in the days ahead with his prognosis of, of the cancer. So be praying for him. Uh, continue to pray for Rebecca. She had her treatment last week. And uh, it's always just, Rebecca, I'm just calling you. It's always a joy just to see you here smiling and knowing what you're going through. And thank you for being here. It's just such an encouragement to me, your pastor, and I hope we can do that to you. And just continue to pray for Rebecca, pray for others in our, our church that needs our prayers. I know there's many. Uh, Miss Connie and Mr. Dale is going to travel the world, so be praying for them. Y'all pack. Miss Dale, you got all your stuff packed? I've got everything. Okay. <laughs> you got your one T-shirt and your one short. That's all I need. There you go. Man, I, I, y'all have a good time. Be praying for them as they'll be going. And I know there's many that will be going on vacation. Be praying for Randall. Randall will be preaching next Sunday morning, next Sunday night for me because we're going on our vacation. We're looking forward to it. And I told Connie we were looking. I said, you know, we almost need a vacation after we go on vacation because we're going to have all four grand boys with us. So we, we, we might need another week when we get back. So, But it's always a joy to go, and we're going to be going. to. And I know there's many others, and Charles and many other of you will be going to the beach and Getting that last weekend, but can you believe school will start back in two weeks? Wow. Good. <laughs> Dwight. <laughs> Dwight's ready for school. I tell you what, I don't know if school's ready for Dwight, but he's ready for school. But, yeah, let's just be praying for our kids as they'll be uh, getting back to school. And how about other prayer requests? I know I've called out these names. How about some others? And maybe some updates on some. Well, if not, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and just ask his blessings upon the remaining part of our service. And uh, Tommy Murdoch, would you just ask God's blessings upon all these names that have been mentioned, our country, and just remember our service tonight. Yeah. 
Y'all can see I practice a lot. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm taught, it sends out a light, a light that I might see, and the light that shines in the dark will safely lead me on if it was for the lighthouse my ship would sail no more everybody that lives around us says tag that old lighthouse down or the big ships don't sail this way anymore and there's no of it standing down then my mind goes back to a stormy night when just in time I saw the light Yes, the light from that old lighthouse that stands there on Calvary's hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. For Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, He has shone His light around me that I could clearly see. If it wasn't for the light, then tell me where would this ship be? I thank God for the life I, I owe my life to Him. For Jesus is the life I, and from the rocks of sin, He has shone His light around me. That I may clearly see If it was a for the lighthouse Then tell me where would my ship be I wish I could do that on a whim. I wish I could just do that, period. But man, what a thank you, Dwight. You know, that, that song is one that is old and is older, and we've heard a lot. But you know, it's got a great message. Where would we be if it wasn't for Jesus today, the light of this world? And you know, there's so many people that are missing it, and it kind of goes with what I was just thinking about preaching tonight and just kind of thinking of thoughts of things over the weekend and things that have happened. And, you know, we live in a fallen world, right? We agree we live in a fallen world. And uh, it's a sinful world. And it's, it's by the grace of God that we're not where some of those, well, that young boy was yesterday on top of that roof. Just by the grace of God. <coughs> But, you know, we live, because we live in that fallen world and we have those sinful natures, temptations are really unavoidable 
it's a really an unavoidable part of life. Y'all agree with me? Temptations are just something that's unavoidable in life, and we have that. And, and this problem uh, uh, that began because of the, back when Adam and Eve. So all this started back with Adam and Eve, and and this was when sin uh, began, and it has continued ever since. Ever since, throughout every generation, it has been going on. But I got a however in there that I like to say sometimes. However, as believers in Christ and believers in, in Christ, we don't have to yield to temptation. You know, so often we think we do and we think that we can, it's okay. Oh, it's okay to kind of yield to temptation every now and then. But you know, as, as followers and believers of Christ, we don't have to yield to temptation. But yet, many of us do. Many of us do. And the reason being is we don't have a method or a reason or a, some kind of plan to deal with them. We just let them come along and whatever happens, happens. And when the temp, we know the temptation is going to come. If you don't believe me, there are going to be temptations that come your way probably before you go to bed tonight. Probably before you get out of here. There are going to be some temptations of thoughts or words or something to come into your mind before you even leave. And we have to have a plan. In fact, as I say that, there's a way to respond that will help us build a, I guess you could say, a strong defense. And uh, if we go to the one who is successful, and you know, I'm, I'm one of those, David, when I see somebody that has experienced it and, and come through and, and really uh, defeated some things, I like to watch what, how they did it to kind of see how I can do it. Well, you know, for us, we have a person who has gone through life and had a lot of temptations and successfully conquered every one of them. We can learn from it. You see, that's Jesus Christ. We can learn lessons from his examples. You see, just, just go back, and we'll start from where I kind of want to start tonight. Is think about when Jesus was baptized by John. All right, he's baptized by John, and in Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17, we see that it, it says, This is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. A dove descended, and we see that. But now right after that, and this think about it, this was a pretty high, big, big, big experience, and I'm sure just like when we come up out of those baptismal waters, how we felt. And it was shortly after this high point in Jesus' life that we see in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This was not a spontaneous or accidental event that took place right here, but it was one that was planned by God for his divine purpose. All right, this is where we got to go with this. You see, the Holy Spirit deliberately led Jesus into a time of testing in order to prepare him for ministry. That's had to take place. This was, this was an uh, intentional time here. The Holy Spirit deliberately done this. And like, this is the same reason the Lord allows temptations in our life. Think about this for just a minute. This is why he allows it. For our testing and our preparation. For our testing and our preparation. Just because you have temptation doesn't mean you have to cave into them. When they come our way, God is kind of testing us and preparing us along the way. I got a little definition here, and it says temptation is an enticement to act contrary to God's will. Think about that. I'm going to say that again. Temptation is an enticement to act contrary to God's will. And this is exactly what Satan was attempting in this situation in Jesus' life and what he continually tries to do in my life and if you're honest, he continually tries to do that in your life. Every time we're enticed to disobey God with our thoughts, with our words, with our actions, we must choose whether we're going to walk faithfully with Jesus or we're going to cave in and walk with the father of lies, Satan. Every time. you got a choice. He is, and you've got to think about it, and I always think about that, the tempter. 
You know, in the Bible, the tempter is called many names in Scripture. You, you all know some of them. Some of them that I come up with, uh, the devil. Sometimes some of you wives call your husband, and they, well, here comes the devil. <laughs> you know? But in the Bible, he was called the devil. He was called Satan. He was called the accuser, slanderer, and the follower of lies. That's just a few of them. You might have others, but those are a few names that he was called. And he is an Kind of think about it. He's a pretty smart fellow. Matter of fact, a very intelligent person. He's an, an intelligent being who is completely evil and is directly involved in carrying out evil in individual lives and corporately in larger scales in this whole world. He doesn't just come individually. He comes in the whole world. And, and you think about it. That's why we're in an evil state in our, in our world today. Satan is running rampant and people are just caving in to him and letting him have his way and they don't care. They complain about it, but they don't understand he's deceiving. He's such an intelligent person. You see, you've got to realize, go back a little further, Satan is a fallen angel who first appeared in scriptures in Genesis uh, and when he came into the Garden of Eden where he seduced Eve into a lie. He pretty much just brought her right into it. And he's the original source of sin, and he continues to spread that throughout this whole world, and he does that today. What he did that day in the Garden of Eden, he still does it today. The same way. The same way. One of Satan's description is convincing or deception is convincing people that he doesn't exist. Guys, let me tell you what. Do we not live in a world today that people really don't think he exists? Oh, he's not that bad of a person. It's not bad. You know, Satan's not real. Man, there's no hell. There's no hell. So I don't have to worry about all that because all this garbage that you've been trying to teach me about church or trying to say, that's just a bunch of fairy tales. That's, that's what Satan is in, and guys, he's getting us in churches sometimes to believe that because you don't hear about hell. You don't hear about him much. He's real. He is as real as Jesus is. And he's trying to deceive us to that point. You see, the description of the devil, and I, always, I had to put this in here because it brought me back to my seventh grade year in school. Our description of the devil today is a little guy in a little red suit with pointy ears and a little waggly tail and a pitchfork. Right? I was one of those in seventh grade. I had one of three. I got to tell this, Chase this rabbit. I had this three-wheel golf cart, and the cheerleaders needed a mascot. We were the Red Devils in Lincoln, Lincoln County Red Devils, and they needed a mascot. And they thought since I had that little golf cart, they told me if I would bring my golf cart, they would let me ride it up and down the sidelines during the football games, and the cheerleaders would ride with me. You know, for a seventh grader, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> I don't care nothing about the suit, but I will ride with the cheerleaders, okay? So I wore every home game. Well, matter of fact, it ended up they asked me to go to the away game, so I got to ride on the bus with all them pretty girls because they wasn't more cheerleaders back then. So with my little red suit and my little ears and my little pitchfork. I was the cutest little thing. And as my mama said, you were a true devil. So. But anyway, that's kind of the description of where we're at with the devil, that little red outfit with the long tail, horns, pitchfork. And it causes a lot of people to even discount the, him as, an, as really as an imaginary creature. But if we fail, and I tell you what, guys, if we fail or, or, or fall into the lie or this lie and believe it, Satan has us right where he wants us. When we deny his existence, he is free to ruin our life. I hate to bring up this, but that young boy, 20 years old, Satan ruined his life because he was deceived by lie. No telling. Just overcome him when we hear more and more. But guys, let me tell you what, that's how Satan's working in our lives today, and we're just a short way from being there. If we believe enough of his lies, we can fall into those same traps. No, I can't. Hey, he'll do anything to ruin your life. He will do anything that he can to ruin the life of an individual and especially someone that calls themselves a child of God. 
And you see, when we deny his existence, he's free to ruin our lives because we have no defense against him. Many live their lives that way. And the examples that I've just said, that young man, and then we see young people, and we see adults today that fall into the trap of adultery, alcoholism, drugs. We fall into those traps because Satan tells us it's fun. And the next thing you know, your life is ruined. And there are consequences. See, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, if you want to turn there, I'll read those scriptures. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards a, a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Least at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil taketh him up into the, an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus unto him said, said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt, not worship, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Right here in that Matthew chapter 4, the first 11 verses, we see three temptations of Jesus. And you know, I'm talking about temptations, and we see the account of Jesus' temptations clearly. And it ident identifies uh, clearly who the tempter is, Satan. We see that all the way through these 11 verses. And I want to show you about five point, four or five points that are very important because this also shows us this is how Satan works on us. Works on us the same way. The very first thing I want you to see out of these verses is the timing. The timing of this episode in Jesus' life is very significant. Very important to see this because Satan waited. He could have went to Christ at any time, but he waited until Christ was weak with hunger after 40 days of fasting. That's when he attacked him, right when he also, he knew that, he knew, he knew what the tactics were. Man, when you're weak, when you're hungry, man, you'll do almost anything for food. So he knew that Jesus was going to be weak, so he, he waited and right at an emotional time, when Jesus was emotionally and spiritually and physically spent, he went after him. So look at the timing. Satan is very intelligent, and he always looks at his timing. Have you ever had some of those temptations that come into you in some of the most unopportune times? That's what happened right here, and we see that in these first few verses. But I want you to also look at a second point here, the limits of our temptations that happen. And we see that in these verses. You see, the limits of our temptations are set by who? By God. By the Lord who has established boundaries over which Satan cannot cross. Guys, Satan can do so much, but there are boundaries even for him. We think he can do it all, but God has set boundaries, and he has limits on what he can do because in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, it tells us, God is faithful. So he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptations will provide the way of escape also that you will be able to endure it. You see, in our own strength, when we're weak, when we're hungry, and when we're the most vulnerable, God is there for us. You see, the Lord is always faithful to give us the strength when we're weak, to be with us when we're tired. To help us to endure when we need to. But we have to depend upon him and he will provide a way of escape. You know, isn't that what's so good? I don't know, growing up, you, 
you go and you feel like you're, you don't have, you know, so many people today, the reason they turn to so many different things, drugs, and there are so many things out there that people turn to is because they feel like they have nowhere to go. They feel like they have no room to, to escape in. But God always gives us and provides a way of escape from the temptation that Satan is trying to get us to go in. You see, the plan of defense against temptation is reliance upon God's word. Only God's word. When the devil came with tempting suggestions, what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't argue with him. How many times have you tried to argue with the devil? I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Because when you start arguing with the devil, the devil usually wins. Let's just be honest. And he, Jesus didn't argue with him. He didn't try to engage in conversation with him. But he immediately responded with passages from the scriptures. First, Satan tempted Jesus to use his divine supernatural powers there in verse 3. To satisfy his hunger, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. That's what he tells, oh, if you're really a Christian, don't worry about it. God will forgive you. Go ahead and do it. He's trying to ruin you. See, he was trying right here. If you are the son of God, command these stones to turn to bread. And Christ immediately answered in verse 4, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You have to have the scriptures in your, that's why it's so important, guys. I don't just, these scriptures that you're learning for experiencing God and these scriptures that we put in here, they're to help us and challenge us. I'm trying to learn scripture. I'm not good at memorization, but trying to put scriptures in here because it helps me to have a defense when Satan starts tempting me. It gives us something to fight back with. And you see, that's what Jesus was doing right here when the devil was suggesting that Jesus jump off the pinnacle and do that, and, and he would miraculously land on his feet. Remember in verse 5, he said, go ahead and jump off. You'll be fine. I know it's a long way, but you'll land on your feet. He said that in verses 5 and 6. He even, and the devil even knows scripture just like we do. He even used scripture to support his proposal. Hey, go ahead. The angels will come get you. You know, Satan knows the Bible probably better than we do. But yet, he uses it against the Father. And right here as he was doing this, Jesus once again quoted the word of God on his defense in verse 7. On the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. You see, finally, Satan took Jesus to a very high mountain. Here's where it all gets good. He's already tried to get him when he was hungry and he's trying to tell him, hey, look, you can have it all if you'll just bow down and worship me. And now he's saying, look, um, he took him to this high mountain and he got to showing him all the kingdoms of the world. And you know what? He's doing that to people today. And I see that young people don't fall, on, uh, uh, fall into the trap that Satan's trying to say, follow me and you'll have all the friends and have all the fun you want. Payday is coming someday on everything that you're doing. And let me tell you, adults, the same thing. He will try to deceive you by showing you all these big things. And he does me, shows me all these big things. But if I'm not careful, I'll fall into the trap. And that's what he was doing right here with Jesus. He was saying, look, if you'll look out here, you can have it all. Basically, the devil was offering Jesus a shortcut to the kingdom. So, as not to avoid, so he wouldn't have to go to the cross. Now, you've got to think about that. He does that to us sometimes. Hey, if you do this, you won't have to go through all that pain and trouble. He was trying to tell Jesus, hey, look, you can have it all my way. Do it my way and not God's way, and you won't have to go to the cross. He was tempting him. He was telling him. But praise God, in verse 10, Jesus said, go away, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him. We have no power. We have no power to beat the devil at his game of temptation apart from the word of God. This is the ammunition we as Christians, we have, and the Lord has given us this to defend ourselves. He didn't give us this to make it look good on the coffee table or in our office. He didn't give us this to put it under our arm and walk into church and let everybody think we got a Bible. 
He gave us this to help us to have ammunition because he knew we were going to be fighting a war. And he knew what those battles were going to be. He knows what the battle's going to be tomorrow, and he's already got scripture for it. You see, within the scriptures are the power and the promises of God. But however, we each need to find a particular verse that applies to our individual temptation. You know, I keep looking for the one, and I ain't been able to find it, thank goodness, about the temptations of chocolate. Some of y'all get that right. But anyway, the individual temptations we all have, we have to have power by verses that apply to our individual temptations. You see, Satan doesn't use the same enticements on Dwayne Evans that he might use on Tommy Murdoch. He doesn't use the same tricks and deceivements on me that he might use on David Gordon over here. He knows us all. And he uses them differently. So we, he customizes them to uh, uh, our particular personalities, our egos, and our weaknesses. That's how he works. And furthermore, we face a variety of temptations throughout our lives. Think about some of the temptations that you have faced in your lifetime. I was just trying to think of some of those, and I just sat back today and said, thank you, God, for pulling me out of that mess. Because I failed, and I fought, fell into a lot of temptations. But if I think about those, I look at those, and I see how he might have been putting them toward me, and then I see other people he did different things to and that's how he works. Satan doesn't use those same things on all of us because we're all different. But you see, we have, as we face a variety of temptations throughout our lives, we have to overcome them. We have to be able to fight the devil. And you see, when we do, and let me just tell you how God, the whole devil works. And you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just kind of reminding you the same way I did me. The old devil works when you might beat him at one game. He's firing back right after that with something else. He's coming after you. He is always ready with new ones. Don't just say, oh, I got him beat today. Okay, I did it. Hey, by the time you sit down, he's already firing us and got you tempted again. Because that's the way he works. That's the way he works. He's ready to come after you. And in order for us to consistently to live in victory, we need to build a wall of truth, not a wall around us to keep people separated because that would go against what I said this morning. But we need to build a wall of truth around ourselves. When our minds are filled with Scripture, that's why we're memorizing Scripture. That's why we're going through experiencing God. That's why you come to Sunday school. That's why we don't uh, forsake assembling together. That's why. So we can come together and consistently fill our minds with Scripture. Then what happens when you start filling your mind with Scripture? What happened? A good example is Jesus. When Jesus was being tempted, what's the first thing that come out? Je devil, get behind me. Scripture started coming forward. That's how we build a wall up around ourselves. That's how we respond. And it's what we give the devil what he deserves. Defeat. See, each time we su successfully fend off a temptation with his word, God's word. Our faith is ignited. And it's, uh, it's ignited with joy. And then we get excited. And then God gets excited. Our confidence builds that, hey, look, I can defeat the old devil. And I can live a victorious life in Christ. You know, a lot of times when we're being tempted... And I have been there. I don't know about you guys. I've been out there when I feel all alone. Those temptations are coming constantly. But you know, we never walk through temptations alone because if you're a Christian here today, if there has been a time when you ask Jesus Christ into your life, you never walk through these temptations alone. The Lord is always with you. He's always there. He will give us the strength to resist temptation. Here's what he's doing. He's just waiting on us to ask him. Well, why don't you do it? Because he loves us. He is a God that loves us. He will give us the strength to resist temptations when we cling to his word and we use it to defeat the tempter. But he wants us to choose what we believe in our heart. 
Do you believe that God is victorious over sin, the devil, and the grave? Yes, I do. Do you believe that you have the power that Jesus had to resist the tempter? Yes, you do. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is prepare our bodies and our minds to do the will of God. And you see, that's what it's all about. So as I close, I want to ask you a question. What are some areas of temptation with which you most often struggle? I laugh about it and, and I say jokes about my chocolate. Don't put chocolate out there because that's a big temptation. But seriously, what temptations? And, and guys, this is true. You probably, if you think about it, some of those same temptations are the ones that you fail at a lot. What are some areas of temptations with which you most often struggle? Hey, Satan's going to keep throwing them out there. It's just like a bait. He's going to keep throwing it out there as long as you're biting it. In the past, what has been your strategy for dealing with some of these temptations, or I call them enticements? Oh, I just go by and just whatever. If it happens, it happens. I try my best not to do it. Man, those, my other buddies would be drinking and ask me to drink a cold, and I'd do my best not to, but next thing I know, I didn't fail. I can tell you real quick how to fix that. Don't go with those buddies. What's your strategy for dealing with those temptations? You see, when you start using this method that God has given us of what Jesus has laid before us, and guys, it's a pretty good thing. His mind was, but he was Jesus. But let me tell you what. Sometimes we forget who he really was. He was just like me and you. He was a man in human form. He had the same temptations. He hurt when somebody pushed the nail through his hand. It hurt just like it would hurt me and you. He cried out and hurt when they beat him with a, 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 a whip. He hurt when they hung him on the cross and they dropped that cross into the ground. He hurt. And he had the opportunity not to do that. The temptation, gee, God, the Satan was going to give it all to him the easy way. If he'd just say, yes, I'll worship you. It's the same thing that Satan is telling us. Hey, you can have an easy life if you just bow down to me. But there are consequences. To the easy life. There's consequences to falling into the temptations of Satan to deceive us. And the number one one is a life without Christ. A life without Christ. Either here on earth, and then if you live here on earth without Christ, it's an eternity without Christ. And even for us as Christians, as we know Jesus Christ, maybe we're saved. But we're falling into the temptations constantly. What happens is, is Satan keeps us mired up into our sin to where we never know any good to God. He can't use you. And you're always sad and have no joy. And Satan loves our, to steal our joy. He doesn't do anything with it. He just loves to steal ours. And I have seen it in so many people of Christians. I have lived it in my own life where I have fallen into the temptations and during the weaknesses of the moment, I've fallen into the trap that Satan set before me. Instead of falling into God's word and saying, get thee behind me, Satan. And knowing that I've got the power, I've got the power to defeat him right here and as I close, I just want to ask you tonight, as your eyes are closed, is there any temptations you're struggling with? Is there any sin? I, I'm going to go deeper. Sin that you need to let go of. Satan's just got you wrapped up in it and you deceive him. It's just, it could be disobedience. could be many things. I'm not going to ask you to come down here and put it on the altar. I'm going to just ask you to do business where you're at with Jesus. We're going to sit here just quietly for just a moment. Let you do business with God. And if, hey, if everything's good and you're, 
you're walking right up there with Jesus and you've got, you know, you've done defeated all these things and Satan's saying, man, I, I ain't going there. That's great. Just pray for us that, that needs that extra help. But whatever it is that God's telling you that you need strength to, to defeat, tell him to give you that strength. Ask him what scriptures you need to carry around and roll over in your mind in the next few days. Father God, as we close our service tonight, we thank you for meeting with us. We thank you for these, your beloved saints that have come together and not forsaken the opportunity to come together and to worship you. Father, as we sing the songs of worship and as we open the, the word of worship and given the opportunity to give in worship, Father, we thank you for all the chances we've had to worship you tonight and we hope that you're pleased with each one and father as we leave here tonight we pray that lord that you would help us because father we we're just being honest and, and up front and real we know that satan is going to bombard us with temptations but father i want us all to leave here tonight knowing that we have the power to be victorious over him. I pray, Father God, if there's any of us stuck in some of, or have gotten caught in some of our temptations, Lord, and there's some problems going on, I pray, Father, that you would just help us see in your word what we need to do to just overcome. Father, we love you and thank you for loving us. Thank you for all your people tonight. Help us to go out and just share Jesus with someone and maybe, Lord, that someone could just see the mighty joy that we have because of the love of Christ in our heart. And we might be able to share that with someone. We just ask your blessings upon each one. And Father, we just thank you again for meeting with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is so good. God.